In this video, you'll learn how to pick out a SPAS-12 of your own. You'll learn a little bit about what to expect, what to look for, and the best advice I can give anyone looking for a SPAS-12. Chapter 1 is what to expect. Here are a few important considerations you should bear in mind before deciding to spend your money on a SPAS-12. The SPAS is over 30 years old, and most of them have been sitting in safes for a bulk of that time. Think of it like an old hot rod that's been sitting undriven in a garage for 30 years. Odds are it's going to need a couple things before you can take it out for a spin, but if you're willing to put in the time, you'll wind up with something special and you'll have learned a lot in the process. When you buy one, it's going to need taken down, cleaned, and ensured that it's reassembled correctly before you can take it out and shoot it. Additionally, almost any SPAS-12 you'll find will require approximately $40 in parts to get it running again safely, so keep that in mind. There are a couple parts on the gun that were made of cheap rubber that didn't age very well and have weakened significantly or have rotted away altogether. The two main culprits of this are the shock buffer in the rear of the receiver and the shock absorber in the folding stock. The good news is the parts are now available but require a little installation. If you're already familiar with disassembling guns or you have a competent gunsmith in your area, you're going to be just fine. Check out some of my other installation videos to see if it's something within your realm of ability. I'll leave two links to the main ones in the comments. Another important note to consider is that despite its portrayal in most video games, the SPAS-12 is not a loading shotgun by design and was intended to be used that way as its primary method of fire. The SPAS-12's gas system is tuned to reliably cycle 2 and 3 quarter inch defensive loads, such as buckshot and slugs, which are a little more expensive. The pump feature was added for shooting pepper ball and beanbag rounds that otherwise wouldn't cycle in the gun in semi-automatic mode. Most will find it to be a little more cumbersome and less enjoyable than the SPAS feels in semi-auto. Step 2. Picking out a SPAS. Let's pretend we're walking around a gun show or walking into a gun shop and we come across this spaz. Let's go over it together and see what we need to be looking for. After you've asked the seller for permission to handle the gun, the first thing I'm checking is the finish as that's really the hardest thing to fix if you're not happy with it. Move the folding stock to check the sides of the receiver and move the action sleeve forward to see the heat shield. Some finish wear on the heat shield is to be expected, but if it's completely shiny it can give you an idea as to how much the spaz was fired, as pumping the action sleeve repeatedly will wear the finish off over time. Next, check the action sleeve to check the function of the dual firing modes. Depress the button on the bottom and slide it forward for semi-automatic mode or backward for pump. It should click into both fairly easily. If the action is stuck, it more than likely means some extra cleaning is required. Next, check the magazine cutoff button. It should spring back when pushed. If not, a new spring will be required and is easily replaced. Check the grip plug for cracks. These were made out of the same rubber as the buffers and can fall away over time. If the grip plug is cracked or missing, it can be replaced relatively easily. Turn it over and check and see if the top sling mount is broken on the pistol grip. These are replaceable but require removing the folding stock which is a little more difficult. If the folding stock is the style that latches onto the rear sight, take a look to make sure the entire spring-loaded assembly is present and functioning. These aren't easy to replace so this is important to have. If it's the style that latches onto the pistol grip, make sure everything still folds and deploys properly. Step 3. Bonuses and Accessories If you're a collector, there are some parts you may want to keep an eye out for. First, check the trigger group that the gun comes with. The lever safety trigger groups were dangerously faulty and could cause the gun to fire. They were recalled for a conversion to a crossbolt safety that fixed the problem, and the converted trigger groups can fetch over $500, or alternatively, you can have your lever safety group converted to a crossbolt by the SPAS-12 project for a fee. Accessories will increase the value of the gun as well and are all hard to find for the SPAS, starting with the factory sling. The slings are a piece of green canvas with steel hardware that has been either stitched or riveted and have been seen for around $200 or more. Folding stock hooks are also highly sought after and can be sold for several hundred dollars by themselves. It's important to check your folding stock and make sure that it has a hole for a spring assembly in the tail to accept a hook before trying to track one down. Some folding stocks weren't so equipped. SPAS-12 tools are small steel devices that include a choke tube wrench, flathead screwdriver, and trigger group pin punch. Some also have what seems to be a bottle opener, but it doesn't work very well. They make nice collector's items and typically range around $100. Factory scope mounts are very difficult to come by. They feature a side mount using a new set of screws to replace your factory trigger pins and have a weaver style rail on top. These are not very common and can sell for over $200. The shot diverter is the hardest to find of all the SPAS accessories. The purpose of this muzzle device was to act as a muzzle brake and also divert the fired pellets in a pattern that was more conducive to being used against personnel. If found, these have sold for over $400 and are considered to be one of the holy grails of spaz collectors. Another nice accessory to have is the combat bolt release. This looks like a giant mushroom button that threads into the factory bolt release and does a great job of helping you manipulate the gun a little faster. Because of the obvious benefits to the function of the gun, these are a pretty sought after accessory and can fetch over $200. 
Also be aware of barrel length. Most Spaz 12s came into the United States with a 21 and a half inch barrel, but there are 19 and 7 8 inch barrels out there as well, as well as a very small number of 18 and a half inch barreled Spaz 12s, which are typically more valuable. Step four is red flags. First off, anyone looking to buy a Spaz 12, the best advice I can give is that you should buy the gun you want the first time. If you think you'd like a Spaz with a folding stock, you should buy it that way. If a factory sling is important to you or a factory hook, the odds that you'll find one on the aftermarket are very slim. So if someone is pressuring you into buying a Spaz you don't think you want, based off of the premise that you could just add a folding stock later or go on Gunbroker and find one, the odds are you probably won't find one, and if you do, you're going to have to pay a lot for it. So again, buy the gun you want up front. If you notice in the photos of the Spaz 12 you're watching in an online auction that the gun is only shown with its action sleeve to the rear and the folding stock folded over, there could potentially be some ugliness hiding under there. Taking a minute to ask someone for more pictures could save you some despair when you receive it. If the pistol grip is covered by an aftermarket wrap or even electrical tape, that's typically a dead giveaway that the grip plug is broken and will need replaced. Be mindful of sellers advertising a Spaz 12L or law enforcement only model of the Spaz 12 at a higher than fair price. This is a common misconception that deals with the markings of the receiver. The letter L is an abbreviation for Luigi as in Luigi Franchi and is abbreviated or spelled out on all receivers. It's also advised to be mindful of those advertising Spaz 12s with lever safeties mentioning things like, yes it has a lever safety but this one actually works. The flaw in the lever safeties is such that they will all eventually wear themselves to the point of failure and none are immune to this problem, hence the total recall. That concludes this video. Again, to reiterate, the best advice to give to anyone is to buy the gun that you want the first time. Finding parts after the fact is going to be very difficult. Thanks for watching this video. If you'd like to learn more about the Spaz 12 and related family of shotguns, check out the Spaz 12 project at www.spaz-12.com. Also subscribe to us on YouTube and check out some of our other videos. You can also find us on Instagram at, at Spaz 12 project.